Jebbert here? Friend. It's a very pleasant privilege and a distinct honor for me to say welcome and thank you. We know that you came here today to see this beautiful new auditorium, the College and Community Auditorium, and to see and to hear Fred Waring and his Pennsylvania. So far as we can determine, this is a very interesting first. This is the first time in the history of higher education in the United States that a state institution of higher education and a community have joined together to build an auditorium. Secondly, so far as we can determine, this is a, a first in terms of the use of these acoustical panels in the United States. They've been used in foreign countries once or twice, but not here. And then, of course, this is our premium preview for the community. It's an exciting day for all of us here at Ball State. First, it's a real thrill for the college to be able to open this uh, auditorium. Second, we're extremely flattered and pleased with your enthusiastic response to our invitation to be with us for this sneak preview. But more than that, we are deeply grateful and appreciative for the support that you contributors gave when you made possible this community auditorium program. It was your dollars and uh, your labor on committees and your expression of A number of considerations, in part an appeal from people in the state of Indiana who met with me in Chicago. The basic test, of course, was in New Hampshire, when it was said that success was impossible because the people there were controlled by the Democratic Party, and secondly, it was said that they were all on the side of the administration's policy, that they were hawks, principally because most of them were dependent upon employment in defense industries, which seemed an ignoble sort of argument to make. It was also said that they were mischievous in New Hampshire, which encouraged me a great deal. <laughs> in any case, we, whatever the combination of forces were, the results there were most encouraging. And so we went on from there to Wisconsin. And whereas in New Hampshire, I wrote, I ran against a, a write-in and the said, therefore, the results were meaningless. And uh, after all, they only opposed me with the governor of the state, a Democrat, and one United States senator.
And, 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 and the whole jury went like this. They were looking at me, they said, oh. And they looked at this guy and went, <laughs> And, my, and the district attorney says, uh, <laughs> it turned out to be the funniest courtroom scene ever. Really. I was telling, I was, we were talking about funny things that happen. It has nothing to do with this right now. But uh, there was um, in, in Reno, Nevada, I went to the, the nuttiest funeral I ever went to in my entire life. A big gambler died. <laughs> and a pit boss gets up to deliver the eulogy. <laughs> and he says, friends, he says, uh, Willie's not dead. He's just asleep. And a voice in the back of the church yells, I got 5,000 and says, Willie, don't wake up. <laughs> Brett, I'd like to introduce the president of Ball State University. We're going to make an introduction. Oh, fine. Thank you, Dr. Robert Bell. Thank you. Brett, this is no joke. Even though I find myself smiling inside. <laughs> Because we're down to real honest to goodness who's your business. We have with us this morning the Indiana Secretary of State, Mr. Ed Wilcox, who wants to make a presentation to you as our top sagamore of the law bank. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Thank Ed, you. Uh, nice, nice to see you, you again. We know that uh, you have been honored across really the face of the earth in many ways, particularly by the laughter and love of your fans. But it's my opportunity here, you as a favorite son of Indiana and the banks of the Wabash, which is uh, not only symbolic but true in your respect, uh, years, a few years before you walked the banks of the Wabash, Indian tribes drove the banks of the Wabash River. And the Sagamore was, of course, the chieftain of the Indian tribe. Since that time to the present, governors in the state of Indiana have been privileged to uh, honor Indiana's distinguished citizens with a certificate entitled the Sagamore of the Wabash. And on behalf of Governor Orr, it's my privilege to present it to you today. I'd like to read a couple of whereas clauses here for you. Whereas the greatness of the sons of Indiana derives in part from the qualities possessed by the noble chieftains of the Indian tribes, which once roamed its domain, and whereas, whereas it has been immemorial custom of the state of Indiana to attract to its support those who have exhibited such qualities, and whereas there has endeared himself to the citizens of Indiana, one Red Skelton, distinguished by his humanity in living, his loyalty in friendship, his wisdom in counsel, and his inspiration in leadership. Now therefore, recognizing his greatness and desiring to avail myself of this counsel, I do hereby appoint him a chieftain upon my staff with the rank and counsel of Sagamore of the Wabash, Witness my hand and seal of the Council of the Sagamores, Indianapolis, Indiana, this third day of October, the year of our Lord, 1981, signed Robert D. Orr, Governor of the State of Indiana. Thank you very much. It's been <laughs> with the maestro of the classical guitar, Andre Segovia. Mr. Segovia, first of all, welcome to Muncie, Indiana. It's very nice to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. In reading part of your resume, I noted that at the age of 14, you made your first public appearance in Granada. This is... Exactly. Can you recall your feelings going way back those many years ago at that time? At that time, the young man has no feeling, has no uh, stage fright. Mm -hmm. He has nothing but the, you know, the impulse to 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 play and to and to do as well as he mm -hmm. can. Why did you happen to pick the classical guitar as the instrument for oh, concert? Oh, by elimination the, of the other. Um, the man who used to play the violin in the little village where I was was very medical. Mm, musician, mm -hmm. and instead of attracting me, you know, he repelled me. I? And the same thing with the cello and with the piano. Uh, the other musicians were so bad as himself. <laughs> and then I, I put my attention on the guitar because even played by the rough hands of the people, preserves 
the uh, melancholic tone, you know, the uh, sounds beautiful. And then I took the guitar with the consternation of my family and I began to search for music rhythm for the guitar. I found uh, very little and from that moment I began my dedication to the instrument. President Worthen, President Green, friends, students, faculty, trustees, administrators of Ball State University, it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight. This is a wonderful auditorium, and uh, I see that every seat is filled, which is a great uh, pleasure for me. Sometimes when you have been in politics and are now out, you don't know what the reception might, uh, you might anticipate. And particularly uh, troublesome to a formal politician is the introductions. This tonight was very beautiful that Mike Green gave me, but it's not always that way. On occasion, as a matter of fact, I'm invited to go to a place by the program chairman. And most uh, often, those working positions in an organization are, are held by Democrats. But then I get there, and with a lot of television cameras around and a lot of news reporters there, the president of the organization, quite often a Republican, decides, I think I'll introduce this man and get my picture in the paper tomorrow. And those Republican introductions are not nearly so favorable as I would like. When that happens, my only response is, ladies and gentlemen, of all the introductions I've ever had in my life, that is the most recent. Well, sometimes, as was the case with Mike's introduction, I get, you know, nothing but uh, nice things that I don't really always, under, uh, don't always uh, deserve. This uh, occurred to me not long ago. I, I have, I'm not a good storyteller. Uh, when I first began running for president, a lot of people said, gee, this guy from Georgia, you know, a governor from Georgia, from the racist South, uh, he'll never do anything in politics, but at least he's from the South. The Southerners can always tell good stories. Well, uh, they had to wait till my successor came along to get a good storyteller in the uh, White House, but... President Brownell, members of the faculty, students, friends, a few preliminary remarks. One, I like to teach small classes. <laughs> Two, when I see so many of you, I remember what I felt when I was invited once for reasons that are totally strange and incomprehensible to me to throw out the first ball or the first game or the World Series. <laughs> I, who had never seen a baseball game, I have no idea what they wanted. <laughs> I hope today you know, you have an idea what I want. Three, I know that According to the rules here, after I will give you my meditations, my comments on, on situations that have to do with morality, there will be questions. I want to warn you, I believe in questions more than in answers. <laughs> However, if you will ask a question and I will not be able to answer, I will tell you a story. <laughs> and now, a story. One of my favorite ones. It's about one of the great writers of the 20th century, the one who influenced my own writing and my own concept of life and society and, and humanity, Franz Kafka, whose work I'm sure you have studied in this prestigious university. 
The story is that Franz Kafka, who was sick, uh, used to spend his summer vacation in a spa. Uh, 